This is code.org, and I have this crazy animation. If you've been following along, you probably do too. All right, you've got a background, you've got sprites, check. Now it's time to give the user, your users something to do. One, on the interactions table from your planning sheet, find all the interactions that rely on the user input. Key presses, mouth movement. Yeah, so my students, you have this. Your teacher should have provided most likely. You can do it without, but you don't want to. You might want to write this down to create a planning sheet if you don't have one. All right, properties, interactions. Here we are. Click on the robot. I said robot rotate. This is an example. I would actually have two or two more of these most likely. So at least three, probably four interactions. But regardless, click on the robot for it to rotate. So add an if or an if else block if you have if you need a fallback action inside the draw loop. Add the appropriate input block for your condition, such as key down, mouse down. Okay, so we're using an if statement to check a condition. And the, chick the uh, condition I want to check is if they click on my friend the robot. So we do need this in the draw loop because I want to be checking constantly if this occurs. So I'm headed to control and I'm actually going to do an if else. I'm going to be fancy. I'm going to drop mine above draw sprites. You really just need it in the draw loop. Now, what did I say? I was going to check if what? If the mouse was down. So I guess maybe not down over the robot. Oh no, pressed down, mouse pressed over. Perfect. That's a new block. I didn't see that. So if the mouse is pressed over, what's the name of my sprite? Robot. That seems easy enough. And now I can go ahead and do my sprite.rotation and drop it in here, right? However, I want to be fancy. I'm actually going to just highlight this all. I'm going to do command, control C on a computer, command C on a Mac, which just means copy. And then I'm going to do control V or command V, which is paste. Now I do need to make a change here. So I'm going to have my robot always be rotating. Why? Because I can. However, and we've seen this before with gears, I'm going to have it rotate one way constantly. But if they click, if this is true, if the mouse is over the, ro oh, I'm not doing click. If the mouse is over the robot, then they'll rotate the other way. So right now my ro robot's going counterclockwise. Now, if I put my mouse, oh no, pressed over, I am doing click. So now I'm holding it over the robot. Zoop. Cool. All right. Now for my cow, what was I going to do? I said uh, mouse over cow. Oh, well, I just did that for this one. I want to do something different for cow. So I'm going to do an if for my cow. And I'm going to say, I'll say if space. So key down space like jump because the cow is kind of jumping up and down right so if the space key is down what am i going to do well i'm going to make my cow go jump up and down all right and i want kind of a little bonus thing so for my bonus animation maybe my surprise animation you could say i was going to say if your mouse is above so up in the sky up in the sky, I want to change the weather. And really what I mean is I want to change this animation. So let's go find the other one. I'm going to go into ground here. I think it's here. Yes. Sand. Uh, stone. What is this? Cake? Oh, I'm got Yeah, I'm doing cake. All right. Ground is cake. So if they put the mouse into the sky, I want to make my ground suddenly be cake. So I'm going to do control again. And say if I need an if else though, because I want it to change back. So if, and then I'm going to say less than. Why less than? Well, look at my y value. So the center is 200, 200, but if I go up, y decreases. So I want to know if less than, hmm. I want to know if the mouse's y value is less than, I'm going to say 100. They need to be near the tip top. And what will I do then? Well, I'm going to go to my sprites now. And if this is true, if their mouse value is less than 100, well, I'm going to set the animation of what? Well, I have a ground sprite. I created ground sprite. Okay. So I'm going to change its picture is what I'm doing. And I'm going to say ground dot set animation. And let me find the new one. Cake. No. Yeah. But 
let's see if this will let me run. Yep. So if mouse y is less than 100, let's see what's going on here. Because my mouse's y value would not be, let's do an else. So it might be because we haven't filled in the else. And so at all other times, I want the ground to be its normal animation, right? Which is the grass. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's interesting, though, that it defaults. Maybe I'll do it reverse then. I don't know what it's doing. So I'm going to say if the mouse is greater than 300. There we go. And so if it's down near the bottom, otherwise it's grass again. I love it. So those are my three animations. Let's make sure. Add the appropriate block. Key down. Yeah. Can you create more sophisticated conditionals by nesting them or using compound booleans? Oh, well, okay. Why don't I create a surprise then? That sounds like a fun challenge. Um, so what they're saying is basically more complicated stuff. What if I do then, if mouse is less than 300, I'm going to put another if inside of that. Mind blowing. If mouse is less than 300, I want to know also then key down. And if the, I'm going to say the down arrow. So if mouse is less than 300 and the down arrow is down, I'm going to change the animation again. Wild. Two. I want this one. Like they're falling or something. It's rock. Rah! <laughs> All right. I'm having too much fun. So if the mouse is greater than 300, I mean, if it's down here and so this would only run if this is true and they hit down, then I'm going to set the animation to that one I just showed you. Rock. Stone. Cool. So and now I'm going to hit down. Boom. OK, I'm up here. I'm going to hit down. Nothing. I'm down here. Nothing. I have hit down. And if I, what did I say? Uh, oh, space. <laughs> yeah. And click. Craziness. Click. <laughs> I love it. All right. A compound Boolean would be, what they mean there is a and and, which honestly, I don't think we've gone over. Did they even give it to us? They did. All right. So a compound Boolean might be um, if, the cow, if space is down, I could do it here. I'll give you an example right now. If space is down and and mouse, uh, world dot mouse is less than 300. Okay. And so what this does is both these things have to be true for it to work. So now, and, and means both of these. So I'm saying if the space is down and my mouse is less than 300, then the cow jumps. Okay, so I'll hold it, right? Both of those are true, so my cow's Y is random. If I go down here and hold it, nope, it has to be less than 300. Cool, we're getting complicated. Let's keep going. 